Greetings, mere mortals, and welcome to October. It's that time of the year again when we look at frightful toys. And today's subject is very special. <laughs> this is the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive G.I. Joe and the Transformers crossover set called The Epic Conclusion. And today, we're gonna be talking about just one character from it, Bludgeon. We won't just be looking at the toy from this set, though, but also the original Generation 1 Transformer. You're getting two reviews for the price of one! Now, normally, we'd start with the toys, but since this is a G.I. Joe channel, I should probably tell you who the hell Bludgeon is. He's very famous and well-liked by Transformers fans, but a bit obscure if you're only familiar with that brand a little bit. He's a Decepticon from Generation 1, and is most famous for his comic appearances, where he first showed up as the leader of a small group, but later managed to work himself up to leader of the Decepticons during a time when Megatron was dead. With that small introduction out of the way, let's talk toys! Meet Generation 1 Bludgeon. This figure was released in 1989 with all original parts. Or, I should say, these figures, plural, were from 1989, since he's a Pretender. A Pretender is a transforming robot that has an outer shell that can transform as a disguise. This disguise is also the reason I'm talking about him, since it's a samurai with just a skull for a head. I feel a special kinship with this little guy. Oh, I'm not sure if this works as any kind of disguise. Who's he pretending to be? Scorpion from Mortal Kombat? Anyway, let's talk about the toy's shell first. It looks really cool. I mean, it's a robot samurai with a skull for a head. You can't get more metal than that. Pun intended. The only problem I have with it is that this barely qualifies as an action figure. It only has two points of articulation at the shoulders, so the only way it moves is the arms going up and down. All pretender shells from that time were like this, so he really needs to get by on his looks alone. But fortunately, he does! There's lots of nice little detailing on the body sculpt. And the helmet looks great. Plus, it's removable. This reveals a very detailed skull, with fracture lines, and the back of his neck even has sculpted sinews. He also came with a white gun that looks really powerful and reminds me a little of Optimus Prime's weapon. Overall, the shell looks great. It's both intimidating and a little creepy. Shame about the lack of moving parts. So now, let's talk about the inner robot. <laughs> Look at how tiny and cute he looks. That's like the opposite of intimidating. I guess he has this scary disguise with a skull to cover up his insecurities. You probably shouldn't read too much into that. He's got a simple, elegant color scheme of green and brown, and it's nice to see his face is painted. It's a good little touch. The purple of the gun is a weird choice, though this was apparently a deliberate choice since other pretenders of that class used the same color for their accessories. Bludgeon has a very simple transformation. His legs fold up, and then you attach the turret and the gun so he becomes a tank. Doesn't get much easier than that when it comes to Transformers. Having a transformation also means he gets a little more articulation than his shell. He can bend his legs at the knees, and since the turret is removable, it can move 360 degrees. I will say that on Timmer's figure, at least, the joints are quite stiff. Even the turret is very hard to remove. 
Speaking of that turret... While the figure fits snugly inside the shell, there's no room for that part, so you're supposed to stick it on his arm as a sort of small shield. But this really ruins the whole aesthetic of the toy. So I just leave it off? All in all, there's quite a few accessories, which means there's quite a bit you can lose. Hell, with a pretender, you can lose an entire figure to make the other one incomplete. Couple this with a smaller production run, because as far as that toy line was concerned, these were minor characters, and you've got yourself a toy that's hard to find, mint and complete on the secondary market, and it goes for stupid prices. Thank Cthulhu Timmer still had his from his childhood! One last thing about the accessories. Like I said, there's quite a few. But you know what this samurai robot did not come with? African sword! This is made worse because in the comic he sure as hell had one. It was his signature weapon! Overall, Bludgeon makes for an awesome toy, or set of toys if you will. And that was the only figure he got in the original line. There were a few toys in later years, but we've gone far enough off topic already. That means it's time to get back to G.I. Joe and talk about the con-exclusive version! So meet Bludgeon, again. This figure was released in 2013 with one original body part. His body came from two different modern figures, a Storm Shadow and a Written Ninja, and the body configuration was also used for that year's Budo figure. But he does have a new head sculpt! Duh. And this guy looks awesome! It's a great, great figurine! It's also an utterly terrible toy! It can barely stand up without a figure stand, which, by the way, this figure did not come with. It has plenty of articulation, but the clothing severely restricts this, and his helmet doesn't snap onto his head because the cape thing is in the way, so it kinda just balances on his shoulders. Now, I know the argument here. This isn't a kid's toy. It's part of a special set aimed at adult collectors. Fine, that's true, but in that case, shouldn't collectors demand the very best quality from products specifically aimed at them? Having a helmet that stays on the damn head does not seem like an outrageous demand here. Having said all that, let's concentrate on the good stuff. Like I said, this guy looks freaking amazing. And now he really does resemble Scorpion, if Scorpion was a samurai instead of a ninja. Hell, he looks more like him than the original Hasbro figure did. Like most modern figures, there's excellent detailing. But I want to draw special attention to the tiny Decepticon logos on his coat. That is some very fine work. Also, his head, while it still looks like a human skull from afar, up close, you can see it's robotic, and it's exquisite in its detail, including evil red eyes. Not sure why it looks like he's got tiny horns, though. By the way, the clothing, which is removable but too much of a pain in the ass to bother, is also from the Retaliation Budo figure that came out the same year. I believe Timmer described that thing as more of a statue than anything else, too. One flaw of the original they absolutely fixed is that Bludgeon finally comes with a sword! Hell, he comes with two! About bloody time! Overall, G.I. Joe Bludgeon is a very cool-looking statue masquerading as an action figure. It's good that it exists, but it could have been so much better. With that, why don't we briefly talk about the character, starting with the, um, deck specs? That's what file cards are called for Transformers, right? The Comic-Con one is a carbon copy of the original, so we only have one to go on. He has a motto. To know your limits, you must first know your foe's limits. 
Now, this sounds vaguely sensuish, but it's completely made up by the writer. Bludgeon is the only result you get when you plug this phrase into Google. Probably because it doesn't really make any sense, but it sounds deep. It goes on to say he's a master of metallicato, the deadly Cybertronian martial art. I suppose that's why he was picked for the 2013 set, as it gives Snake Eyes somebody to fight. Yes, of course that set came with a Snake Eyes figure. You can't get a box of cereal without a Snake Eyes figure falling out. The rest of the car talks about his weaponry, like how he has antennas that produce electric fireballs, and how his armor secretes odorous mucus slime. Okay, first of all, ew, and second of all, why would it even need to do that? Huh, I'm sure parents really appreciated that they didn't put in that play feature on the actual toy. Lastly, he can produce a smoke screen. As for the inner robot, it has a cannon. Well, duh, he's a tank! Transformers tech specs also came with stats. Bludgeon has maxed out skill, whatever that means, plus high intelligence and endurance. Though, he has a very slow speed. I'm guessing this refers to the inner robot, a tank is quite slow, and not the shell, which would be super fast, with him being a martial artist and all. Like I said at the beginning, Bludgeon rose to Decepticon leader in the comics, which made him a fan-favorite character. He was also a religious nut with his own cult. You know, it's funny and or sad to see him pull off all these martial arts moves in the comic, when the toy was basically a brick with moving arms. What I'm saying is, kids had to use their imaginations quite a bit more when playing with Transformers than other toy lines. Not that this is necessarily a bad thing, I mean, kids should be encouraged to use their imagination. His fate in the original comics is that he gets killed by Megatron, who was brought back to life. Because of course he was. Finally, I have a few thoughts on the Pretenders. They don't make any sense. The Autobots disguised themselves as humans, but they were still giant robot-sized, so who the hell were they fooling? They wanna infiltrate the Centrati or something? And the Decepticons were just monsters. They did offer explanations in the comic saying the shells made them more protected and powerful, and they had them go to planets with giant humanoids, so maybe that Centradi dig wasn't that far off the money. The thing is, they didn't have to be giant-sized. We know Transformers have shrinking technology, that's why Megatron can turn into a human-sized gun to say nothing of Soundwave and Blaster, so they could've just said the shells can shrink to human size too. That's why I'm not really bothered 2013 Bludgeon is the size of a G.I. Joe, maybe they finally implemented that technology. And that was Bludgeon, one of the most interesting Transformer characters, with a very unique look to him. Shame about a lack of play value from either one. I do really like the skull look, though. So maybe next time we'll take a look at some more skulls. Blah Until next time, mere mortals. And like, subscribe, comment, do all of those things!